Good morning, Swan Valley Regional High School. My name is Captain Pete Musters, and I'm a proud serving member of the Canadian Armed Forces and the Royal Canadian Air Force. I'm an officer and pilot serving currently with 3CFFTS in Portage the Prairie, Manitoba. But my last posting was with 408 Tactical Helicopter Squadron in Edmonton, Alberta, uh, doing most of the Army support work. I recently uh, had a tour doing operations in Iraq, and Canada's military history makes me very proud to pay tribute to the men and women in uniform who served before me. When you hear stories of veterans, you realize how important it is to remember what they did and what they gave up for us so that we can enjoy our peace and freedoms today. Their sacrifices have been with their lives, their scarred bodies and minds, and the significant amount of time that they've spent away from home to protect us. Jennifer Barbrush asked me to explain what Remembrance Day means to me now. And I think about the stories of older veterans who are no longer around. I was lucky enough to grow up with a neighbor living next door who was a Second World War Navy officer. And he happened to be a surgeon during the D-Day landings in Normandy. And through him, I met a lot of other uh, Second World War veterans. I remember hearing stories through my Dutch relatives who lived in Nazi-occupied Holland during the Second World War, who were starving because of the theft of food from the Germans as the war dragged on. And ironically, those relatives were bombed by the very RCAF squadron that I joined later. But they weren't bombed with bombs, they were bombed instead with food to help the civilians survive the war. Those memories are starting to fade for the next generation because they can't tell their stories any longer. So I ask you to take some time today to think about and learn the, their stories. They weren't simply a number, and a lot of them had just finished high school. Today's veterans are more those from the Cold War, peacekeeping, Afghanistan, and Iraq. And know too that this isn't all history, and that today there are many men and women who risk their lives every day for operations and training for operations. So this Remembrance Day, uh, it's important for me to remember those names that I've spent uh, getting to know. Some of those people are uh, Captain Thomas McQueen, who died in a CF-18 training accident in 2016 in Cold Lake. Uh, my friend Kevin Hagen and his entire crew flying a cyclone helicopter killed off the coast of Greece during Operation Reassurance. Now, the stories of young people traumatized by their experience and seeing the horrors of war again aren't just those who served in the trenches of the Great War or the grueling battles of the Second World War. Those awful moments have also been lived by people that I've served with working overseas. And they can't unsee or suppress moments that Canadians truly wouldn't comprehend. But those stories and textbooks are the same ones that are being written for you again today. Just as we've trained and fought for over a century, we continue to do so. Today, while enjoying a homemade meal at lunch, know that Canadians are out there eating hard rations. When you're at room temperature, know that someone is in plus 50 Celsius in the heat of the desert or minus 40 Celsius training with the Arctic Rangers. When you get home today, know that soldiers, sailors, and aircraftsmen have been away from their families for months on end, on guard for you. While you're carrying your book bag home, know that someone's carrying a rucksack that weighs as much as you do, and the military members have been doing that for over a century. Tonight while you sleep, know that Canadians continue to stand on guard as before and after the guns fell silent on the 11th of November 1918, marking the end of the First World War. So what has their sacrifice bought us? I think most of the things that we take for granted these days. While I was serving in Iraq, I was in a theater where people didn't get to sleep safely in their homes at night. The most terrible things that humans can do to each other were everyday occurrences. Here in Canada, we can speak our minds, join political movements, vote for those who we choose, and laws are upheld. Corruption's not rampant, girls are allowed to go to school, and your religion is yours to choose if you want one. My tour was a short one compared to most, uh, most veterans, and millions of those tours have been done by Canadians on behalf of their neighbours for the last century. And they've done that to ensure that the freedoms and responsibilities we have today remain. These tours have been in the mud of Vimy Ridge and Passchendaele, the beaches of Dieppe and Normandy, over the dark skies of Europe and the cold Atlantic, and countless places of chaos for peacekeepers to discuss just a few. My squadron mates recently just returned uh, from supporting UN peacekeeping operations, flying helicopters for medical evacuation, moving troops and supplies in Mali, one of the world's poorest and unstable countries. At home, Canadian Armed Forces stands on guard in different ways. 
We conduct search and rescue operations from the air and sea, and we respond to the needs of communities struck by floods and fires. So please think of the men and women who have served Canada in some of the most difficult situations anyone could ask, and think of what they've done for over a century in places like Amiens or half a world away in places like Afghanistan just recently. Please give a special thought to those who have never come home and those who gave up the years of their youth. Please give your gratitude to the veterans and the families who are still with us. We must never forget what they've given us.